Is it a sin to use the new versions? I want to answer that question today in this video. And uh, I'm actually going to answer that question with another question. And that is, is it a crime to use counterfeit money? Okay. Um, I want to show you here an article online about the subject of counterfeit money because it has some very interesting tie-ins to the whole thing of what Bible <coughs> version you are using. <coughs> so here we'll, we'll check this out. It says about counterfeiting here. This is a dictionary website here. It says, the process of fraudulently manufacturing, altering, or distributing a product that is of lesser value than the genuine product. Let me just stop there for a minute. Now, here I have a $100 bill. It's a real thing. And over here, I have a counterfeit. Okay? This is a $100 Monopoly bill. <laughs> okay? Uh, obviously, they're not the same thing. And, and, you know, I'm using this for purposes of, of this video. There aren't too many people that are going to be deceived by this thing. And I was, I was actually going to print out something that looked like this, and I thought, no, <laughs> I don't even want to go there. And you'll see why in a minute. So this is the real thing. This is a counterfeit. Keep that in mind. Back to the article. Counterfeiting is a criminal offense when it involves an intent to defraud in passing off the counterfeit item. The law contains ex exemptions for collector's items and items that are so obviously dissimilar from the original that a reasonable person would not consider them real. However, making a poor copy is no defense if the intent to defraud exists. Okay. Like I said, most people aren't going to be fooled by Monopoly money. If you go to the store and try to pass this off as a real $100 bill, well, you aren't, you're not going to get too far. You're not going to be able to buy very much. But if your intent to defraud exists, then there is some criminality there. Okay. Keep that in mind. I'll be coming back to this in just a little bit. Let's read here a little bit more. It says, Counterfeiting or conspiracy to distribute counterfeit goods can lead to state or federal criminal charges. Okay, jump down in the article a little bit there. It says, The Secret Service, the branch of the Treasury Department that is charged with counterfeiting or enforcing counterfeiting laws. If you have counterfeit money in your possession, you will get a visit from the Secret Service. Okay, now, like I said, I'm using this obvious play money. I'm just using it for illustration. But if I was holding up something that looked like this, I might get a visit from the Secret Service. Okay, which I didn't want, so <laughs> I'm going with Monopoly money. Just to prove a point here. Okay, punishment. Let's look at the punishment here. Under federal law, counterfeiting is a Class C felony punishable by up to 12 years in prison and or a fine of as much as $250,000. State laws also, also establish penalties for counterfeiting. Now, what you say, what does this have to do with Bible versions? What does this have to do with the Bible version issue? Well, right here is the greatest book that's ever showed up on the planet. That's an indisputable fact, by the way, proven through centuries, okay? This is the real thing. This is your $100 bill. Here, I have a counterfeit, okay? This is a fake. And if you want to make it really look right, here's an NIV that's an obvious forgery. This is your monopoly money right here, okay? Obviously, no reasonable person, no reasonable Bible believer would, would think, you know, you, I mean, carry the two of these down the street sometime and see how people react. People will know what this book is right here. Black leather, you know, with the gold gilt edge. They know what that is. This thing here, well, it could be anything. See, this is monopoly money over here. This is an obvious uh, fraud. But this one... And I've done this before in these videos. See, they look the same until you, you know, you read the spine, or in my case, I put these stickers on there so you can tell them apart. This is a counterfeit, okay? 
Now, is it a sin to have this? No. Is it a sin to have a counterfeit bill like this? No. Okay? If you are ignorant and you are using an NIV, I did for 15 years. I wasn't sinning. I didn't know any better. Okay? But I came to the point where I realized that I had counterfeit. I saw the verse deletions. And I understood the reason why is not because the verses shouldn't be in there. It's because this is based on 1% of the extant Greek manuscripts. And those manuscripts come from Alexandria, Egypt, and from the Roman Catholic Church. And I thought, wait a second here. Roman Catholicism is wrong. It's a, it's a very wicked system. It's a cult. Why would we be going there to get our manuscripts to translate the Bible? Why would we go to the Catholic Church to correct the King James Bible? And I saw the very obvious, blatant attacks on the Lord Jesus Christ, on the blood atonement, on, you know, uh, the deity of Jesus Christ. I mean, so many attacks that are in here, and they're obvious, okay? So what did I do? I realized all of a sudden, I have a counterfeit bill. I have a counterfeit Bible. See? And I realized that I needed to have the real thing. And so I gave up my NIV for the King James Bible. Now, what would happen if I said, well, okay, it's not God's perfect word, but I'm going to try to pass it off to people. I'm going to try to act like it is God's word. See? Then it no longer is innocence on my part. Now it becomes a crime. And in like manner, you have all these people out there Many people do not know that, that are using these new versions. They're doing it very innocently. They have no idea. And they find out, and that's when it becomes an issue of whether or not it's sin. When you find out about the Bible version issue and you see the obvious deletions that the new versions are guilty of and how that they attack and remove, it's not you know 10 or 20. It's thousands of verse deletions, verse perversions, and they just keep getting worse. At that point, when you understand the issue and you continue to use the NIV and these other, all the hundreds of new versions that have come out and all the study Bibles and all these other things, you know, that are all based on that Alexandrian Roman Catholic type text, when you continue to use that, then it becomes a sin. Okay? It's not a crime to go out and use a counterfeit bill if you are innocent and you don't know any better, okay? If some little child went out and they tried to buy some candy with this and there was a Secret Service guy standing there, they aren't going to jump on the kid and throw him on the ground and taser him or something like that. Well, hopefully not. They would just say, uh, little boy or little girl there, you, you can't be using that. That's, you know, bad. And let's say that they actually came up with a, a bill that looked very similar like this and it was a really, truly a counterfeit. Didn't have the watermark there and and whatever else, and the, the line thing there. Let's say somebody, let's say you actually went to a store and you tried to buy something and somebody said, hey, wait a second here, that's not the real thing. And there was a Secret Service guy there, I'm just saying, suppose, and he came over and he said, where did you get that? And he said, hey, I was out at some store and it was given to me as change, I, I, you know, I don't know. And the Secret Service, they investigated and they found that, yes, you are innocent. Well, no big deal. But now, you, let's say you show up at the store the next week and you have another counterfeit bill. And you show up again and you show up again and you have a whole wallet full of counterfeit bills. See, you're no longer innocent at that time. Okay? When you are shown the truth about these new versions, you are shown the fact that this it doesn't even come from the same tech, uh, same part of the world not from the same Greek text, not even from the same Hebrew text, okay? The King James Bible is a completely different Bible. And when you are shown the truth about the new versions and you persist in using a counterfeit, and if you are a church leader, if you are in ministry, if you are a pastor, and you are intending to defraud people and you are taking away the genuine and giving them the counterfeit, let me tell you something. You are in a very, very serious sin at that point. If you are here on YouTube and you make it your purpose 
to attack and destroy people's faith in the King James Bible, you are going to answer big time, okay? If you make it to the judgment seat of Christ, and I say it's a big if, if you make it there, you are going to answer, and you are going to be down on your face, you know, I can't say in the dirt because it probably won't be dirt up there, but you are going to answer for it. And I think most of you new versionists out there, I mean, some of these radical new versionists that are, that are, that are so messed up in other areas, I think a lot of them are lost, okay? So they're not going to show up at the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to show up at the great white throne judgment, okay? And you will answer. Nobody is going to get away with attacking the holy word of God right here that I hold in my hands. This is not a counterfeit. This is the real deal. And by the way, I'll say one other thing here before I close. If I convince you, why, why am I here attacking these new versions? Well, because I want to show you the genuine. I want to give you faith in the real Word of God. Now, if I said to you, I want to give you this $100 bill, it's the real thing. And don't write to me and ask for it because you're not going to get it. Okay, <laughs> I'm not rich. But if I, get, if I said, I want to give you this real $100 bill, and I hand it to you, and now you have it in your pocket, what kind of confidence is that going to inspire in you when you go out to the store? When you go out in the world, you're going to have confidence that you can buy things because you have the real thing. Now, if I hand you this and I say, oh, it's, it's good, it's good. You know, I, I, you ought to prefer this, you know. Was well, it real? No, but, you know, it's good. But well, you're not going to have any confidence in this. Why? Because you know it's a counterfeit. And see, that's the main thing here. The philosophy behind these new versions is the King James isn't perfect and the new versions aren't perfect. They're all counterfeit. They're all, they all have errors in them. See, that's the philosophy, philosophy over here. That's why I never went with this side over here. A King James only advocate, a King James Bible believer, as we're, you know, as we are, we believe that we have the real thing, the genuine. And that's why when we go out places, we have confidence that we are saying, thus saith the Lord, hey, the Bible says, see, we're really the only ones that can say that. The Bible says. Because we hold a Bible in our hands which we know is perfect. If you're a new versionist, you can't say that. You don't believe in the perfect Word of God. Okay? So, is it a sin to use new versions? Well, if they're innocent, as I once was, as I once used an NIV, no. I was not in sin. I honestly believe that the NIV I was holding was perfect. I believe that there was a perfect written Word of God available for me. I was ignorant. Okay? As many of you are, and as many of, you know, we know people out there who are using these new versions very ignorantly. They don't know any better. There's no sin in that. But when you find out about the issue, and you find out that you are carrying counterfeit Scripture, and you persist in that, and then you actually just not only persist in using counterfeit, but you attack the genuine, then you are in sin. And I don't believe that there is a greater sin than attacking this book. Okay? So is it a sin to use a new version? Only if you know about the issue. If you don't know, well, then you need to repent. You need to study the thing. You need to get away from these Catholic Bibles over here. And you need to go with the King James Bible. So that's it. Thank you for watching.